The values, or lightness and darkness, of the shapes that make up a painting are actually more important than the colors of those shapes. Look what happens when I make the colors on his face weird and crazy. It still looks like a face, right? Now what happens when I change all the values? What a mess. Let's use this block, without the color, to measure just the values. I limit myself to only five possible values between pure black and pure white. And I made this little tool with those seven values to put next to the shapes that I want to measure. I give these tools away with every DVD I sell, but you can make one yourself for about 20 cents. Use Photoshop or any graphics program to make the bars and print it on your printer, or have it printed at Walgreens or some printing shop. I check the value of a shape by seeing if the value of that shape matches a value bar. If the edge of the tool disappears, like this one, it's an exact value. This one too. Or if it's a little off, like this one, you will at least be close and know which way to go, lighter or darker. Here's one where it's darker than this bar and lighter than this one. So you know the value is somewhere in between. A great little tool. I'll show you how I use it based on this two hour practice sketch. Now to make sure I'm concentrating on just value, I use a black and white subject. We don't need the value tool yet, and there's no color to think about for this exercise. We can just concentrate on building an accurate foundation for the painting. It's a great way to train your brain to see and use important reference points, and the difference in the value of each shape that gives the illusion of a three-dimensional head. For a few tips on making the sketch, notice my early strokes are mostly straight lines even though I'm making curved shapes. Also, I'm staying very loose and kind of feeling my way toward where the edge should be. I'm waiting as long as possible before I decide this edge is exactly right and I can firm it up. Here I started making those sketchy straight lines stronger as I got more confident of the location of all the elements. Still not cut in stone, where I see an error, I have time to make corrections before getting into any detail. Well, I did see some errors. The mouth area, from the base of the nose on down, just didn't look right. So I took some turpentine and wiped it out. The upper part looked okay, so I worked on that, and left the lower part for later. Again, I didn't need the value tool yet, because all I had to evaluate was the black background. Now I could get down to using my value tool. This area was about a 60% black, so I wanted the same area on the painting to also be about 60% or dark gray. Here's one that's about 40%. Well, the same area on the painting should also be 40%. By now you should see how this works. Don't be concerned if you're not dead on especially when you're just learning how to do this. After a while, you won't even need the value tool. You'll be able to make these judgments just by eye. Now that I had so much more of the painting working well, I was able to go back and do a better job on the mouth area and finish the bottom. But remember, this is not intended to be a masterpiece. There will be errors. It is an exercise. Don't just do it once and feel you have mastered the ability to judge values. You may never fully master it, but I guarantee each one will be better and easier. Later, when you work in color, the same value judgments will apply. Now here is what was left of my palette when I finished the painting. Notice I made a series of puddles of the different values going from pure white all the way down to pure black. This picture was taken after the two-hour session, so it's pretty messy. But you can see where I made test mixed measures between the values to try to match what I saw on the photo. They say that being messy is also being creative. I'll buy that. 
I used only two brushes for this exercise. A big one for the larger areas and a tiny one for the tiny areas. Notice the big one has a long handle. It's made that way so you can stand way back and work on the painting from a distance. It helps you see how well you're matching the painting with the subject. One instructor told me, if you don't use the whole length of the brush, I'll break off what you're not using. As you know, brushes are expensive. I have never forgotten that threat. This video is only one of over 40 free videos here on YouTube that cover many aspects of painting portraits. Plus, I have a few much longer videos on DVD or download for sale on my website, irvrudley.com. They go into greater detail of every step I use to create my portraits. They're not expensive. Check them out and have fun painting.